Multiband compressors. Yay, a much, much better way of dealing with music that's highly dynamic. Here we are. Let's turn it on. Let's go to a nice default and let's link all. Nice, easy four to one. Let's try the same thing. I think we had a four to one. Let me just remind myself what I had there. Oh no, 4.7 to one. 4.7 to 1 with an attack of 38.6 and a release of, we'll call it 188 for kicks. And uh, the threshold is, why can't I see it? Oh, yeah, 15.2. There we are. And we'll leave auto off, and the output was six. I'm just going to dial these into a reasonable facsimile of what I think a nice dispersion of the bands would be. And we'll thank you very much. How does this do? Pretty good. Doesn't even sound like it's doing anything. That's because if you look down here, look at what's happening. How much of the low frequencies are being cut ongoingly because of that big percussion and the high frequencies where you really notice distortion and weird, weird things like that are kind of being left alone because the energy isn't there. It's in the low frequencies and that was what was crushing those single band compressors before. And you're left with, oh, that sounds really nice, and yet it's being brought down. Excuse me. Let's look at the audition. Multiband compressor. We will link all band controls. I'll do something similar here in terms of where things should be, just for the wonders of comparison, and then 4.8K or so. We're going to bring this to 152 the gain will be, well, I'm going to do gain from here, plus 6. The attack is 38.6. The release is 188. And the ratio is 4.7. We're going to turn off this and listen to the built-in audition. Let's go back a bit. That's the audition. Here's a, a ozone. Here is audition again. And ozone. It's really hard to tell the difference. Honestly, they're both very, very good. You do much, much better with either of these than you would with either of those uh, single band compressors. Even if you're